Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, today we're going to learn how you can uh, download Landsat A data um, using the Earth Engine uh, Cloud API. Um, so if you're new to Earth Engine, uh, I'll show you how you can sign up. But if you are an Earth Engine uh, current user, uh, you can skip that part. So I'm going to show you how you can, uh, you know, download uh, Landsat data for any given area for any any location on the planet. All right. Um, let's get started. So what's Landsat? If you're new to um, Landsat Satellite 8 data. So Landsat has been launched by, you know, USGS and NASA collaboration. Uh, it has it has been launched in uh, 2013 uh, and so um, in terms of information about Landsat 8 satellite orbits, um, it's a sun synchronous um, um, orbit and um, about uh, 705 kilometer um, altitude. Uh, and uh, in terms of temporal re you know, resolution or repeat cycle, um, it repeats every location on the planet as every 16 day about two weeks right um, and in terms of instruments so the Landsat 8 has um, a couple of instruments the first one is um, uh, the operational land imager sensor uh, and the second one is uh, the thermal infrared sensor tiers right OLI and um, 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 tiers thermal infrared sensor so these two groups of sensors. So the first one is for um, optical uh, sensing. Um, so these uh, different bands, uh, band one to nine, um, they are um, 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 bands located um, um, within the optical um, uh, optical. Um, uh, electromagnetic spectrum or operating within the electromagnetic spectrum whereas the thermal bands are operating within um, the um, thermal infrared uh, range of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum uh, and if you want to know about you know electromagnetic spectrum and basic remote sensing you might need to check in my other tutorial um, uh, and so so these are different bands, um, and so th this includes the coastal aerosol, um, and the blue band, uh, band two, green and red, um, and you have uh, this other uh, near infrared bands, and you have the thermal band, band ten and eleven, um, and between ten point six to eleven point nine micrometer. And the other second thermal band is 11.5 to 12.5 on micrometer. Okay, um, and yeah. So once we have this, you know, general background information about Landsat, and this is an example of Landsat 8 image. Um, and so let's go to the Erzingen API. So if you're new to Erzingen, uh, you can click erzingen.google.com. And you can get click get started and sign up for a new account. If you have an account, just dis, you know, disregard this part. And if you go to dataset to Earth Engine, so Earth Engine is a cloud API where it hosts a large volume of um, geospatial as well as um, you know Earth observation or satellite data, um, ranging from Landsat, you know MODIS, um, uh, numerous instruments, uh, satellite um, instruments. Okay. And you can also find some geospatial pre-processed uh, dataset for your you know, research or project, whatnot. So if you go to um, Earth Engine, you can click Landsat data here, and you have different sensors here, right? So currently we're interested on Landsat 8, so we, we will click here. And then for diff Landsat, you have different um, image the first one is the raw image without any atmospheric correction and whatnot the second one is um, um, after radiometric correction which is top of atmosphere 
um, reflectance. And then the last one is surface reflectance, which we need for most research and you know, publication, right? So you click that, you have tier one and tier two. Um, so um, you can you can pick, um, you know, out of the tiers. Um, so yeah, uh, let's just, um, you know, get started. So the first uh, thing I'll do is um, just let's write uh, export Landsat 8 and let's load Landsat 8. Landsat 8 data, okay? Um, okay, so instead of writing the code from scratch, um, I can literally use um, the code from the Earth Engine um, example, right? That way, it's just uh, you know much easier, right? Um, and I'll copy here and then paste here, right? So what I'll do here is, so we have at least we can we can get started with this one. And then for map center, map dot center, um, this is just an example, uh, but we want to change or delete this because we will have a new uh, study area, right? So our study area will be Cairo uh, for Cairo, Egypt, all right? So what we need to change is um, we'll need to change the timestamp here. Um, I'll just change it to 2022. Just uh, I'll change just the year, right? And the next thing is so what what this does is it will import the Landsat image collection. EE image collection is the image collection that um, has a stack of Landsat image um, for the entire. Um, um, you know, timestamp of the Landsat um, sensor. For example, here we're talking about Landsat 8. Um, so it starts from 2020, uh, 2013 until the current date. So that's a long time series data. And then instead of using the entire time series, we'll just filter by date here. That way we're going to use only. Um, a Landsat data for a given timestamp here in this case, actually I'll change it to January 1st, 2021, which is um, 2022, there one, there one, that means January 1st, right? And then the last date would be uh, June 1st, right? The same year. So it's about six months of data set, right? And the next step is to actually um, use this um, scaling factor um, so for, for some reason, computational and resource reason, um, you know, some, um, you know, data sets are stored uh, as integer to, uh, for computational and storage efficiency. So, you know, the Landsat team provided this scale factor. So we're gonna use that to convert the data to the actual, um, um, number reflectance surface reflectance uh, data okay so this is already provided so to explain that for each of the bands so for the optical bands here i've shown you uh, the landsat ha it has two instruments the first one is oli um, optical uh, line imager and the second one is thermal thermal sensor so for each of the um the groups of bands we'll use a specific um, scale factor. We'll use uh, this scale factor for the telomer band and we'll also use um, this scale factor for the optical bands, all right? And um, so after that, um, we're gonna, um, we're gonna um, apply and add this to our image collection. And then this is just a function, we haven't done anything. So we'll have to apply this function to this image collection. That way, we're gonna um, we're gonna uh, apply this function to each image within the image collection. That's what we're doing here. Um, but instead, um, 
because this is a global like a planetary scale data for um, all, all uh, um, you know, all locations uh, um, around the world, we want to specify our study region. In this case, we're not, we're going to need uh, to generate a region of interest in this case. I'll use, I'll focus, actually, let's change it to a satellite background here. Yeah. So I'll focus, I'll just zoom into Cairo in Egypt. Um, and, you know, Earth Engine has a handy tool. As you can see, these drawing tools, um, they'll let you generate your own um, um, geometry or a GIS layer, a feature layer, a point, a line, or a polygon, or a square grid, right? So we're going to click this and it will generate a geometry. I'm just going to actually rename it to ROI that way. And then we're going to, um, um, sorry, I think let's just um, delete that one. Let me just click that. Um, I'll click that. I can delete that. All right, so let's do it again. So we're gonna, um, um, if you wanna just toggle, you have to click this, um, this, um, this um, tool, and then drawing tool, and then just click here. That way we're, you're, we're not gonna draw. Now we can click, uh, this is pretty much, I mean, the area that I wanna download the Landsat data. So. I'll click here. All right. You just drag and drop. All right. That's our study region. You can you can do it for any any location, right? Um, so I'll change the name ROI. All right. So geometry. That's it. Um, and then toggle. Um, click this um, um, pan. A button here that way I'm not gonna click or just generate a new you can also just remove this if you want to um, so now we have our region of interest instead of using the entire Landsat data we're gonna um, filter bounds right filter actually I need filter bounds and then I'll provide my region of interest it's, it's kind of um, using your a shape file and then because the this function is not ending here um, so so when you write a JavaScript uh, you have to a semicolon just to, cl to close your statement or a function so we have to do that just at the end one time in the middle uh, any any sent, uh, you know statements within that function uh, would when, when not um, have this semicolon. That's why the error is showing here. Okay. Um, another thing is, I think let's just do one more. We also need, I mean, if you, if you just use the raw data, uh, we're going to have clouds. So let's just do some cloud removal by just using the metadata. Filter metadata. What's going on here? Meta. All right, so um, filter metadata, I'll just say cloud cover, it should be can. Okay, so cloud cover, I'll provide a parameter, lace, done. And then I'll provide a number. So this is technically what I'm saying here is, um, I would, I would use um, imagery with cloud contamination less than 15%. If there's cloud contamination in that image, if the cloud contamination is over 15%, I'll not use that image. All right. So we're using only image that have less than 15% cloud contamination. You can change this number if you know, as needed. All right. Okay. All right, so we're gonna have here, we imported the Landsat image, 
we have um, used it subsidy by you know specially we have filtered temporally and we have filtered it specially that way we're gonna use only a specific timestamp uh, image and also for a specific location all right and also for a specific cloud um, cover um, cloud contamination uh, based on the metadata right and then we're going to apply, uh, this is a function that applies scale factor because the data originally is saved as, or the product um, has, um, you know, the surface reflectance value stored as integer. So by applying this uh, scale factor, you're going to turn it to the actual surface reflectance, right? Okay. Uh, and by applying this, uh, data set mind you here we have data set the image collection here we have our function this is a scale factor function we're gonna apply a map so what a map does is it applies a specific function in this case this to every image in the image collection so we're gonna pull the image collection here data set dot map and then um, pass the function here the scale factor function what this does is it will pull the image collection and pass, um, apply that, um, you know, scale factor to every image in that collection, right? So now what we have is um, um, the um, the Landsat image is now um, converted to the appropriate um, uh, surface of like re reflectance value instead of like integer, right? Okay. Okay, the next step is actually, um, so this is an image collection. So in, in our case, we're gonna use, we're gonna need one, um, you know, image uh, for the entire time style for six months, which is, you know, uh, a cloud free, um, an aggregate for, for that six months timestamp, right? So let's create another variable here. For, uh, I'll say image, and then I'll, co I'll call this image collection. This is still an image collection, right? So EE Earth Engine image collection. And then um, copy paste my image collection here, right? Okay. And then I'm going to generate an aggregate statics, like usually a median. So what I mean here is um, give me an average um, pixel value. Uh, for every um, location uh, based on the median value of all image for um, for that six months period right so we may have you know 100 images. what we're gonna have is now give me the median um, pixel value uh, for that entire six months image collection so we're gonna have um, the reason we're doing that is just we, we're gonna avoid uh, or remove cloud contamination uh, and so let's do that so I'll use median stat instead of um, so what this is gonna give us is just one image um, um, generated based on median stat from the entire image collection the next thing we, we need is um, we need to clip this image by our region of interest which is this we have already generated our region of interest size so let's clip the image to do that let's create another variable okay let's create another variable here um let's just call it clip image that way we know it's a clipped version in this case it's already an image it's not an image collection right so we have generated just one single aggregate image here so we're going to copy that here um, and so we're going to call that and then apply clip function and then ROI. That's a region of interest that we have already generated this guy here, right? What's going on here? We're going to have some issue here. Oh, okay. So we don't need var equal. That was a typo. Okay. All right. So we're going to have a clipped image by region of interest, a median average you know cloud, less cloud contamination and we have um, a visualization parameter just this is a true color composite to just um, to display our Lansat data um, and let's um, do this Lansat 
2022. Probably this is a, a band combination for 3 2. Okay. And the next thing is actually to let's create a map center object. That way, uh, when we um, execute this code, it's going to zoom into our study area. So map.center. It will just convert the zoom label. We'll, we'll, we'll want um, to zoom into our study area, in this case, ROI. And you can define a zoom level. In this case, uh, let's see if 10, per 10 um, zoom level uh, 10 uh, value is appropriate. Let's see that. Uh, before we export the data, let's just um, execute this code by clicking run here. Um, if we have, uh, if we have what we need, excellent. So this is our Landsat data. Um, okay, the, all right, so this is our Landsat data, okay? So this is just a, a Landsat data. Mind you, we have, we have done a, an image um, uh, composite media and aggregate. That way, instead of an image collection, we have one single image, right? And we also have to clip it. So this is not, technically clipped version. This is just before the clipping is applied. Let's see what's wrong here. Oh, okay. So the reason is that, um, okay, so the reason is that we're gonna, we're, we're having here the data set because this is just uh, the data set, right? The image collection. Uh, we're not uh, providing the appropriate uh, input to our map function. So instead of data set, is to clip image that way we'll have a clipped version by our region of interest um, in this case here instead of the you know the raw landsat image so let's see let's excuse me hopefully it should change that excellent now we have exactly what we intended to to get right we want a clipped version by our region of interest this is our region of interest right so you can do this for any any given location on the planet. That's pretty um, amazing, right? Um, so now our Landsat data uh, is ready and it's pretty cloud free as you can see. You can zoom into, um, actually let's just change the Google map here. You can see actually satellite data here. So this is Cairo. You can see the high res Google map as a background. Um, and if you overlay the Landsat data, uh, pretty much, you know, uh, you can see irrigation area here, more urbanized area. Um, so you can change the map here. Uh, some, you know, um, suburban neighborhoods uh, and desert area. Uh, the Nile River here, you can see here. Um, excellent. So now our data is ready for download. Let's just uh, do the last, you know, fun part of this. So our objective here is to download a Landsat data for any given location. In, in our case, this is our example, Cairo. So let's write our export function here. Okay. So to do the export function, we want to export this to our drive. So let's just uh, write a title, export to drive. Okay. And then there is an Earth Engine uh, export function. So export image um, to drive. And then this function has a few parameters. So the first parameter is image. So we need to provide the image. So in this case, uh, our image is this uh, clip image. We want to export that, right? Okay. And then next. Okay, so if you wanna um, export this um, um, color composite as shown here, as a true color composite, and visualize it in a, any standard GI software, you wanna add something like visualize, okay? Um, visualize, and then your visualization parameter here. I'll just, um, I'll, um, I'll, update our visualization parameter here as here instead, just to make it a little shorter. Uh, 
and then visualize and then provide a visualization parameter, which is technically here. We're using this to display it here on the Earth Engine, but also if you want to export this same visualization parameter within the image, we can apply visualize here and then provide a parameter here. Another uh, parameter of the export function is description. It's just the name that you want to give um, uh, while that data is exported to your Google Drive. I'll say Landsat um, 2022 and then 432. That's a band combination, a true color composite um, for the band 4, band 3, and band 2 for the Landsat A, right? Another uh, parameter for the export function is a special resolution which in this case I would say um, a 30 meter and another parameter is a region all right I'll provide this is kind of the the shape file that you want to clip your export or use your your, your export as a, a boundary so this is our ROI the last one is a max pixel that way if you if you don't want to max out you know the export you want to define the max pixel so Max pixels about one e um, thirteen, and you close our function and uh, a semicolon to close our function here. Excellent. So this is technically our export uh, function. Once we execute this, we're gonna have our export. Um, our export is running. So what we need is uh, we have three. Um, um, menus here inspector uh, console and the task so we want to go to the tasks area right and then you can see our uh, Landsat 22432 which is the same description name as Israel right we're gonna click this here right so we're gonna um, just uh, we want to keep the um, you know the parameters are they are and the format is geotiff we're gonna click run Okay, and then it's gonna um, it's gonna run. So this is just running the export one. This is complete. It's gonna show uh, you know mark um, mark sign, and then we're gonna see that data on our Google Drive. All right, all right. Now let's get um, our da, 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 um, <clears throat> downloaded data. Um, so it's pushing it to the Google Drive. Uh, here, as you can see, Lanta 2022432. Uh, I'll go ahead and um, download this. Uh, so, click download here. In my case, I've already done this, so <clears throat> I'll skip this part. So, let's add um, our downloaded Landsat 8 data. I'll click layer here, a layer instead of uh, vector. I'll do raster, add raster layer, and then I'll go ahead and um, click the downloaded data here. I'll just click that. And then add that here. I'll close this. Excellent. So this is our Landsat A downloaded data. And the reason you're seeing this as a true color is because we have applied visualization parameter already. So we don't need to do anything. So it's a true color composite. As you can see, green is for vegetation, um, you know, some sand or desert areas you can see here. Um, so it's pretty cool. So that's how this is the Nile River, um, you know. So that's how how you can uh, download a Landsat, um, you know, data uh, using the Earth Engine uh, Cloud API um, um, to um, you know access uh, a Landsat data or any any um, you know Earth observation data uh, for that matter, and for any given location on the planet.